Well, why don't we get started? Go ahead and get started, everybody. Um, it's the left okay. 1130. So Hannah, welcome. My name is Keith Peeler. I am the director of alumni relations at Husson. Been there uh, about two and a half years now. And one of the shifts we've made this year is to do some more online, do online events. Since we're not able to get together in person, unfortunately, with the larger groups that we usually like to have together. So just to keep everybody safe, as you're well aware in your profession. Yeah. So um, we have two alums uh, with us today, Tim Smith and Ashley Sheehan. Um, they graduated just a few years ago and they've been in the real estate business pretty much ever since uh, is my understanding. And I'm gonna turn it over to them to take away this presentation. And as Ashley said, she's got a 10 step plan for you uh, to get all your questions answered. And Hannah, we can just make this conversational. So if you want to just jump in with a question or put it in the chat, whatever, we'll just kind of keep it going. It doesn't have to be sit and listen for an hour. Let's just talk. So, yeah, absolutely. Um, jump right in. Yeah. So Tim and Ashley, take it away. Yeah, absolutely. I am just trying to share my screen, Keith. And I Oh, I got to unlock you. I'm sorry. I do that every time. My fault. That's okay. Uh, how about now? Hmm. Yep, hold on. Okay, Hannah, can you see this handy dandy PowerPoint that I've created? I can. Perfect. Um, Perfect. So this is, like I said, it's a 10 step, 10 easy steps to being a first time home buyer. I'm gonna let Tim start the show here and tell you a little bit about who he is. Absolutely. Hey there, so my name's Tim Smith. I graduated from Hassan University in 2015, both with my bachelor's degree in hospitality management and my master's degree in business administration. Right as soon as I got done, I went down. My plan was kind of to go into the hotel industry um, as, as a management staff, but that quickly changed and I found myself back in Bangor and a very good friend of mine and uh, actually a high school classmate of mine reached out. Her name's um, Courtney Mullins now. And she said that her real estate team needed help on the back end with both marketing their processing work with the eventual kick that I would be licensed and working in real estate. And since I really wasn't planning on anything at the time, I had no idea where I was going. I jumped right into it. Um, I actually started with the Shea Renee team. So Ashley is a former teammate of mine and a very good friend. Um, and then I found myself about a year and a half ago looking to expand my outreach and get out into the world a little bit. So I moved down to Fort Lauderdale, Florida, where I immediately got my Florida licensed. I linked up with my now business partner, Jimmy Cunningham, and we formed the Cunningham Smith group down here in Fort Lauderdale. Um, so like I said, Ashley is a former teammate of mine, and I'm just going to give her a quick minute to introduce herself. <laughs> yes, so my name is Ashley Sheehan. I was Ashley Grant when I got my degree. Um, I graduated in 2013 uh, in the business program. I got my bachelor's degree with a concentration in hospitality. Um, and for about nine months, I worked at a front desk at a hotel um, and found this opportunity with the Sheehan A team to do much like Tim did. Um, I started as an assistant, but quickly became a full-time real estate agent. Um, and seven years have gone by in the blink of an eye and I've now become a broker, which is something I'm pretty proud of. It's the whole the highest tier of licensing that you can hold as an agent. It just means I have kind of the most education I can have, um, just short of owning my own company. Um, and over that time, I've become really specialized in residential real estate. One of my favorites is first time home buyers. Um, this is an adaptation of our um, sorry, my cat's meowing at me, Hannah. Um, it's an adaptation of our 10 step uh, PowerPoint that we sit down with you and do. Um, but I'm a Bangor native. I, well, not native, transplant, I guess you could say. I grew up in East Millinocket, moved here for college, and decided to stay and built my life here. And one of my favorite things about my job is that I can help other people do the same thing I did and, and spread their wings and set down some roots. Um, and without further ado, we'll jump into step number one. Yeah, so selecting your agent is one of the most important things you can do. One thing Ashley didn't mention that I just want to give her a quick little plug is being a broker is a lot more work than it seems. It does mean that she could start her own agency if she wanted to, but it does, it's a very high credential. It's as high as you can go in 
real estate. So just a little plug for her. Now, when you're considering an agent, a lot of things to think about are, are they full-time? You know, is this their everyday job? Do they go into the office? Are they trying to make sales? Do they need to sell in order to continue their business? I always say to go towards a full, full-time full agent. There are a lot of people out there. It's relatively easy to get your license, but that doesn't necessarily mean that the people know what they're doing. So you want to make sure that they're full-time. You want to look at their experience level. How long have they been in the business? Are they with a team? Do they have, um, important thing about teams is you have a lot of people working for you at the same time. So pay attention to their experience levels. You do want to do a little bit of digging to find out what, some past clients say, you know, do they have a lot of positive reviews? Zillow is the best place to find this. Realtor.com is good. You can go to Google, but a lot of the time agents will focus on Zillow and Realtor and not as much on Google. You want to make sure that they're tech savvy and that they know the latest technology that you can use to find the homes that you need. Um, To sign electronic contracts, it really, especially now, makes the process a lot easier. You do want to make sure that they are a realtor, which Ashley will go over shortly. It is um, a code of ethics and a higher higher standard of work that real estate agents can be. Not all real estate agents are realtors. And then another important thing is the financial obligation. This can be different from agency to agency and agent to agent. I know the Shea Renee team policy is that the buyer doesn't pay their agent. We'll go over how that works a little bit later, but you want to make sure to know upfront, are you going to be paying your agent or is the money for their commission going to be coming out of the seller side selectively? So moving on from that, Ashley's going to tell you just a little bit about what it means to be a realtor. Yeah, we wanted to dedicate a whole slide to this because there's a very common misconception that the word real estate agent and realtor are interchangeable. Um, And that's not true. Being a realtor is a choice that we make. It's a trade organization that real estate agents choose to belong to. Um, And it's actually one of the largest trade organizations in the country and also in the world. Um, And choosing to be a real estate agent, you just hold yourself to a higher standard. We have a code of ethics that we adhere to, like Tim touched upon. Um, And also we are passionately involved in the legislature. We have a legislative arm that is full-time salaried, reading every bill, making sure that home ownership rights are protected. And if there's anything that is of a concern, we go to bat and talk to our representatives and the powers that be to work very hard in advocacy of that. Um, So it's just an important component and note to make sure that the person that you do choose is a realtor because you want the best and you want somebody that that is a part of that. Um, And then jumping into the intricacies of being a client and choosing your agent, um, on the right hand side, there's a form called the Real Estate Brokerage Relationship Form. Keith is going to follow up today's uh, webinar with an email um, with this as an attachment, as well as contact information for myself and Tim, if you decide that you'd like to reach out to us. Um, But what this form is, is it's a legal requirement of the Real Estate Commission that I present this to anybody that I have a substantial conversation about real estate with. And it outlines the different relationships that we can have. At a customer level, it's where you are now. Um, My services are limited. I can help you view properties. I could set you up on a search, help you find a financing um, institution for your pre-qualification. I can point out material defects in a home, but that's kind of it. It's not until you choose somebody as your agent that they have fiduciary duties to you and are allowed to give you the full scope of their license, which on the left hand side here is a checklist of kind of examples of what I can do for you now and what I can do for you when you choose me to be your agent and you are my client. Um, And that involves confidentiality, negotiating on your behalf, giving you my opinions on market value, um, and really all the things in between. So whether it's me or somebody else, I advise you to look around and do some research, maybe interview some folks if it's important to you um, to make sure you jive with those people because you want somebody on your side early on, especially in the the market that we're in right now. Um, And then there is one more relationship and it's called dual disclose agency. In the state of Maine, a real estate agent can represent both buyer and seller in the same transaction. And what that means is you can as my client, choose a home that I have listed. 
um, because why wouldn't you want to be exposed to the whole market? Um, but this outlines at that time, if that does occur, it assures you that your motivating factors and confidentiality and everything is still protected information, um, as are the sellers. So I won't tell you why they want to sell, how low they'll go and vice versa, but everything else is very transparent um, and disclosed as it should be. And it actually is a pretty streamlined process. Um, but uh, typically, the first time I meet you is in person, but today it's a little bit different because of COVID. Um, but I usually have a sample of what the representation agreement looks like in a folder for you. Um, and it's a very simple standard document. The first page really outlines what my duties to you are, what yours are to me, uh, explains the way that my agency works, and also puts a begin and end date on our contract because every contract needs one. Um, but in the red square is where I want to elaborate a little on what Tim mentioned about compensation. Um, while you're in this first step of choosing who your agent is, while you're looking at their credentials, making sure their personality jives, you also want to make sure what your obligation is financially. Um, in the Shea Renee team, we kind of have a company policy to make it free for a buyer to have representation by a real estate agent. That is our ultimate goal. Of course, if you choose a for sale by owner or something like that, that hasn't offered us a commission, then there's a conversation. But for the most part, you're going to see a range of two to 3%, which means nothing to you right now. But to break it down a little, what it means is um, the MLS, the multiple listing system, is where us realtors and real estate agents upload our listings for sale. And on those, we offer a percentage. It's usually around 2 to 2.4%. Sometimes it creeps up to 3 And that's offering it to a buyer agent. So somebody who has a client looking for a home that wants to look at that house, you want them to come along and make an offer. And for doing half of the work and getting it to closing, we'll pay you half of our commission. Um, so we accept that. Whether it's 2% or 3%, it, there's no variation of what we'll show you and what you can purchase. We'll take whatever it is. If it happens to be a 2%, I always joke around and say, you'll refer all your friends and we'll make up the difference. Um, but the cautionary tale here is that not all agents have that philosophy. Um, a lot of them do, but there are also some that have a minimum of say 2.5 or 3%. And if the home that you choose doesn't measure up to that on the MLS offer, um, then you'll find that as a closing cost. And you may very well be okay with that. Um, when you choose an agent, they may be worth everything to you and you wouldn't mind paying a little bit more, but I, I like to make sure that you are understanding of, of that possibility. And then step two is what you said you are working on this afternoon, but I'll let Tim go through it to touch on some tips that we have. Yes, yeah, so you're a little ahead of the game. <laughs> the very first step when you're, besides finding your agent is getting pre-approved. It confirms that you're ready to buy. It means that you're ready to go. It allows you to understand what your budget is, how much you can afford. It also gives you some important information like the loan type. Is it gonna be an FHA loan, which is a 3.5% down program that's backed by the government? Is it a conventional loan that's backed by um, the, the third party market movers who are gonna buy that mortgage? Or is it a VA loan? where you have 0% down, also backed by the government. That matters because it helps determine which type of home you can purchase. That will be helpful because on the purchase and sale agreement, it does have an offer term section where we need to be very transparent with the seller, what type of loan you're gonna be using and how much you're gonna be putting down. And the seller wants to see proof that you can purchase. So a lot of different options, there are a lot of different lending institutions out there but it's really important that before you start looking at homes, you meet with someone to figure out what it is that you can buy and make sure that you can buy a home. So you are ahead of the game and that's a great thing, but in an educational format, it's definitely the, one of the first steps to getting ready to go and getting ready to search for homes. Ashley's gonna go over just a little bit more about what searching for the home looks like on the MLS system, something that agents can help you with. Yeah, step number three. So if this afternoon you walk out of your bank and they give you a pre-approval, which I have no doubt that you will, um, that's when you reach out to your agent and it can be me if you want. Um, 
and you tell me kind of what price were you pre-approved for? Where do you want to live? And the things that are important to you, like uh, bedrooms, bathroom count. Some people are very adamant on two bathrooms or they need a garage or maybe they want a certain amount of acres. Um, and we'll put that all into the parameters of the MLS and create for you what is called a portal. Um, and this is what the email will look like as an activation. Um, you click that button that says sign up and it'll start your portal, which I guess I should explain. It's kind of like your own consumer um, profile in the MLS. So you have access to search for listings, um, look at disclosures, all the things that we can see. Um, and it's a much better resource than the typical Trulia, Zillow, Realtor.com, because what many don't know is that they only have that listing information because they have permission to syndicate it from our MLS system. So they take it from our source and give it to you, which happens on a delay um, and doesn't include the disclosures and all of the information. Um, so right off the bat, I try to get that going for you. So first step was portal. Second step is what is called subscription. And this is what will become your search. Um, when you click the button that says, yes, please send me listings, you're going to start getting emails from me um, with new listings that match your criteria. And that is instant. The second that the real estate agent finishes uploading their listing, it goes right out to you, which is awesome in a competitive market. Um, and this is a glimpse at what it will look like. Uh, this is just an example of one that I created for myself for the purpose of this PowerPoint. Um, I'm in the market for multifamilies, but you can put residential in there. It'll be named whatever I name your subscription in the subject line of those emails. And where that red box is, is where the subscription tab is going to be. So if you click on that, you'll be able to see everything. Um, but also you'll see that there is a search bar that says enter address, city, zip, or MLS. Um, you can filter your search. You can make favorites. You can hide some that you don't like. Uh, it's really user-friendly and it really makes it so you can develop your own searches too. Um, so you're not fully dependent on me, but it is connected to me. So if you say click on a listing that you're interested in, um, you look at the pictures, down where the red boxes are on documents, that's where you're gonna find your property disclosures, which is a really important component of your search. Your disclosures can help you rule out a property even before you see it. Um, and as we work together, if we work together, I'll show you what those look like. Uh, it's seven pages with the legal components plus some other, others of what we need to disclose for a property that's listed for sale. Uh, such as water, sewer, roof, heat systems, and things like that. Um, but it's good to peruse those as you're searching. And then down at the bottom are the buttons that you can use to save it as a favorite, get rid of it because you don't like it, um, or share it with somebody if you have somebody that you're searching with and you want them to see it, or your mom or dad or something like that. And then at the very top, there's a button that says contact agent. And when you hit that, you can email me directly about this listing in particular, and we can schedule a time to see it. But you can also text me or email me or call me. <laughs> I'm pretty, pretty available. Um, but the purpose of step three is to get you your search and get you looking. And a lot of times you'll find a lot right off the bat that you want to see. Um, and then we discuss showings, which I'm going to hand back over to Tim. Yeah. So that MLS search is great because you can really organize it by what you want to look at and what you want to look for. And it does give a lot more information than the sites that are out there, particularly those disclosures. So thank you, Ashley. That's very important, those disclosures. Setting up the showings. Every transaction is different. So don't feel like you're looking at too many. Don't be afraid to choose the very first one you look at. There have been several instances where I look at one with someone and they say, this is the one. Yeah, we look at two or three more to make sure that that's the one, but don't hesitate once you find that one that you really like. Everything's authentic, everything's different. I've shown homes to people, 60 different homes, or I've shown four different homes. Everything's different, it's what we do full-time. This is why it's important to have a full-time agent. We do like to schedule quite a few at a time, maybe on a day off, after work, Saturdays or Sundays, we are full-time, so that does mean we work when other people are not working. Um, we like to advise clients maybe to look at 
the homes that they like with us first. And then once you really like a home, we'll go back for a second, a second look with family and friends just to ensure, you know, you get their opinion on it. Um, but it is a way to cut down a lot of the nuisance of looking at homes with a large group of people. So everything's unique. Everything is different. Don't feel like you're, you know, wasting our time by asking us to look at a home. That's our job. We're going to get you in there. Yeah, that term, every transaction is authentic, is one that I find myself saying All so much. Because, yeah. uh, I mean, I have buyers apologizing for looking at too many, for what they think is too many. And I just say, listen, this is my full-time gig. I'm here to help you. And you're going to know when the house is right. And I'll show you as many as it takes. Mm -hmm. um, but if we go down, uh, see a bunch or see one, whatever, whenever you find the one, then comes step five, which is the offer which I'll, I'll let Tim continue on. Yep. yep. So um, we do like to have a sit down meeting with our clients once we find the one that's right. We like to go over the purchase and sale agreement with you. You want to understand what it is that you're signing. We go over section by section and make it clear what your expectations are, what your duties are, and what could happen in a transaction. We do analyze the comps. We look at things that have sold that are similar to make sure that your offer price makes sense in a market like you know, today's market, we can't really lowball as much as we'd like to. Um, but we want to make sure that you're not going to be overpaying for the property. So we really look at what's sold similar to the property. We make a strategy of doing offers. Um, you know, we are the negotiating experts who are on your team to help do the best for you. So it's important to sit down with your agent at the offer time, analyze the market, strategize an offer for you, make sure they go over section by section your purchase and sale. It is a legal binding document. And we are on your, you know, we work for you with negotiations. So very important. Yes, the, the very first time that we make an offer together, Hannah, I like for it to be in person, face to face, or in these times via Zoom, we can do it via a screen share, but it's a five page document with a lot of paragraphs. And we really like to make sure you understand everything that, that it's composed of. Um, like Tim said, it's a legal document. So we're very careful with that. Um, but then hopefully after we've negotiated everything, uh, gone back and forth, reached an agreement, and when we sign the dotted line, that's when you are physically under contract or literally, I guess I should say. Um, it's not until sellers say yes, you say yes, everybody signs the dotted line. That's when we celebrate and you're excited, I'm excited. Um, but then I transition into um, making things happen because that's when the clock starts ticking and that's when my job is um, pretty essential for you taking care of those deadlines, making sure things get lined up and make sure you're prepared for what's to come. And this is a point where talking about the out-of-pocket expenses um, becomes relevant. Um, as a buyer, it's important for you to understand that there are some fees that you're going to have to pay. Uh, there are some really great loan products out there that uh, have like 3.5% down, uh, as little as 0% down, depending on where you fall. And the ratios and, and everything that your lender will go through with you. But there is um, what are called closing costs, which is a fee to your lender and to the title attorney. And that together composes your cash to close. Um, but that's not where it ends. Cash to close is part of your loan. But in terms of the process, you have two things to expect. Number one is something called an earnest money deposit. That is something that is agreed upon in the contract. Usually ranges from $500 to $1,000. And it can be more um, if you decide to be aggressive in your offer, use that as a way to compete um, perhaps. But what it is, is it puts money on the contract and shows that you're earnest about the offer. And it's held at a real estate agency uh, where the listing is in an escrow account that is regulated by the real estate commission. But it's not money that you lose. It's money that goes as a credit to you at closing. But it's there in the event that, say, you breach the contract and the seller wants to seek damages for time they missed out on the market or really just to give it some sort of substance. Um, but if we adhere to the deadlines and get you to that closing table, it's not anything to worry about. It comes back to you. So that's number one. And number two is... Um, 
during your contingency timeframes, there is a time frame to do home inspections. This is probably one of the most important time frames in the whole process. And this is the time to protect your investment and make sure that it's the home that's for you. Make sure everything is in a quality and condition that is satisfactory to you. And that comes by hiring a third party to inspect it for you. Um, we highly recommend them. It's your time frame to make sure, like I said, it's time to protect your investment. What happens is you hire these folks, you get the reports. If anything's unsatisfactory or even makes you feel a certain type of way and you don't feel like this is the home for you, you can pull out for any reason. You don't even have to tell the seller and you can get your earnest money back. Um, so it's super important. And anytime after the property closes, they use a term called let the buyer beware. That's something that comes up with buying a car, buying just about anything. Um, once you have it in your name, it becomes your problem. Um, so inspections, super important. Um, and the components of those, a general home inspection is sort of all encompassing. They'll do your basement, they'll go all the way up to your attic, do the outside, give you a great report point out anything that's wrong. Um, water, if you have a private water supply, they'll do a sample um, and make sure it's free of, you know, coliform bacteria, arsenic, lead, heaven forbid. Um, just make sure it's potable and safe for you to drink. And if it's not, that's an opportunity to make the seller pay for a filtration system or a treatment. And septic, if it's private or sewer line, um, a septic system, that's a huge expense. Um, if, it go, if it fails, it's probably $10,000 plus. So you want to pay the $300 or what have you to make sure that everything's okay. Um, and a sewer line, if you do buy a home that's in town Bangor, you can actually check the sewer line from your home to where it meets the public hookup um, to make sure it's free of any breaks or clogs because you as the owner are responsible for um, the entirety of it until it reaches where it connects to the public sewer. And then radon. As a nurse, I'm sure you know what radon is. You do? Okay. That's about a $150 test that is worth it to make sure that, you know, the concentrations are below the 4.0 PCI per liter. Um, but anyway, you can do as many or as little as these as you want, and you can bring in others if you, say, want a chimney sweep to look. The point is bring them in during this time frame. I'll help facilitate it um, and make sure everything checks out. And if it doesn't, it gives us an opportunity to make it right. Um, and then the other contingency is your loan application, which I'll hand it back over to Tim for. Uh, so in our contracts, you, you get pre-approved prior to going under contract. Once you go under contract, you meet again with your lender, you give them the contract. Um, the purchase and sale, you give them all of your financial documentation and make what's called the actual loan application. You'll get a letter that says that you've proved that you've done that. Um, then it starts with, you know, it goes into the, the loan contingencies. One, of course, is the appraisal. Now, the appraisal is very important because what that is, for a lot of people who don't know, it's kind of the last hurdle in purchasing a home. It is a third party that's hired by the bank to ensure that the value of what you're buying is worth what you're paying for it. So if you're purchasing a $150,000 home, they're going to have somebody come out, look at the comps, look at what's sold in the area at similar homes to make sure that that value is there and basically make sure that you're not overpaying for the property in general. And then... Once you get past that contingency of an appraisal, you know that the value's there, all of your loan documents are in, you get the three magic words, which are clear to close, handing it yes. back to Ashley. Step nine, they are indeed the three magic words. When you hear from your lender that you are clear to close, that's when you can let out a big breath of fresh air. Um, everything's ready, your lender's prepared to fund your loan. There's no more documents you gotta get into underwriters, no more inspections. It just means you got to schedule a time to close, set up your utilities and your services, you know, your water, your electricity, things like that. Um, and then we just meet at the closing attorney on closing day. You'll sign a very large stack of papers, um, but at the end of it, you're rewarded with a couple of keys and a big celebration because it's a big day. You're a homeowner and you don't need me anymore. 
Uh, you can go get into your house all by yourself. Um, but of course, after closing day, our job is not done. If there's anything that does pop up or any questions you have, we're always here. Um, but with that, that's kind of our, our 10 step show. So it's a big step in life, you know, purchasing a home and having an agent that you trust and that you'd like to work with really makes that intimidation factor go down quite a lot. So Keith, we appreciate you here today and having us here um, to speak to speak about purchasing a home. Totally. Thank you so much, Ashley and Tim. Do you have any questions, Hannah? I have a couple of things I just want to kind of reiterate that they mentioned um, that were important to me when I bought my two homes over the past 10 or so years. But Hannah, please, if you have any questions um, for them, please jump in. I think that pretty much covered everything that I was wondering, so. Did you find it helpful? Just oh, for that? sure, yeah. Um, there was a lot that I didn't understand that I get now, so I really appreciate that, yeah. for sure. It's a little bit of an information overload, but we find these first-time buyer presentations. It's actually a common practice that with our team at Realty of Maine that we bring you in to sit down and, and talk about these just because knowing what to expect makes your process so much more enjoyable. Oh, our, sure. our goal is to make sure that you have all the information and tools that you need. Of course, we can revisit a topic and answer your questions, but it's so much easier to not be surprised because this is such a big monumental milestone. Um, I mean, it should be fun. And that's, that's what our goal is, is, to make it about buying your first home, not the stress of it all. I've actually taken a lot of the practices that I learned with the Shader and 18 over my five years down to my firm now in Florida, because what I find is meeting with people face to face also makes them feel a little better going over it makes them feel a lot better getting started it builds the relationships so it's definitely a good opportunity just to to let you know to educate you about the process it's a lot it's a lot and we hold you know we hold your hand through the entire thing so it's not like oh now that you hear everything that's it we go through the steps of the process again with you. You know, we remind you, you need to make your loan application. Um, we offer these inspectors, we think they do a great job. Let's schedule that. And then we go and, and we walk through the whole process with you, so. Excellent. Sorry, Keith, we took over. What did you want to touch upon? No, I know, I know. I, that's why they're, they're not here to listen to me, but I, I just had some <laughs> some some past experiences with, with buying my first home 12 years ago and then my second, I sold that to get my more recent one six years ago. Um, and, and I wanted to reiterate some of the things that Tim and Ashley mentioned, you know, finding a realtor that works with you uh, is key. Um, you know, the last realtor we had text messages, how we communicated most of the time, which was awesome because they, we could kind of get back and forth and not play phone tag. And I, I'd have to think most are doing that nowadays. You know, that's a simple thing, but honestly, it just makes a difference. Um, so. You know, make sure you're, make sure they're meeting your, your needs. Like, you know, if they keep showing you houses way out of your price range, it's obviously not the right fit, you know, ask friends and family or maybe Tim or Ashley the right fit. Um, but finding a good realtor is, is key. Uh, listen to their advice on getting a home inspection, hundred percent, spend mm -hmm. the money. It's just, just my personal opinion. I'm just one guy talking here. Um, but the home inspection is great because you'll actually get to walk through the home inspection with whoever's doing the inspection. Um, and I learned a lot about both of the homes that I purchased. Um, the gentleman who inspected my current home, uh, built homes for like 25, 30 years. Um, and now his full-time job was doing a few home inspections a day and almost makes more money doing that. But, <laughs> um, <laughs> but, uh, but he knew all the ins and outs. He explained stuff to me, you know, it was all new stuff to me, uh, which was really helpful. Um, I'll touch on that really quick, Keith. Yeah, know, please. No. Inspections are probably the single most important thing that you can do to protect yourself as a homeowner. Now there are going to be, they will go through the house with a fine tooth and comb and they will find every tiny little ding that may be an issue. Now, a lot of those things you don't have to worry about because they're very, very relatively insignificant things. But then you find things that are like, oh, there's, you know, knob and tube wiring through the entire house. This is not okay. The septic system is failing. There are a lot of big ticket items. Really good home inspection people will tell you, you know, these are, this is okay. These things aren't a big deal, but this, this is a big deal. And we really rely on their professionalism and their education that they have to help make buyers make decisions with the home process. And we help you with that. It's just important to hear it from someone who really knows the ins and outs of homes. So absolutely worth, worth the thousand dollars to save you the $10,000, you know? Yeah, the full gamut with the water sewer, 
everything. Yeah, general so. and uh, what rate on if you do all four of those, it's probably around a thousand bucks. But so it's probably between four hundred and a thousand dollars to prepare for. Completely worth it. And if you have it in your budget, it's a thousand dollars well spent, even if it comes back perfect. Mm -hmm. um, just to have the peace of mind to know that there won't be surprises. I mean, it is a home. It's a 30 year mortgage. You're probably going to have some maintenance over 30 years, but <laughs> it's for defects and, and to make sure that you're aware of things that you need to keep an eye on. Um, sure. But we have these horror stories of, you know, knob and tube and sewer and all of that. Hopefully that's not the case. Experience. It's not just me talking. Yeah, so. Those are just horror stories. Those, but um, the point is, is if that is happening in this home that looks perfect, the key is to know, well, you still have the power to make somebody else pay for it or walk away. Thanks. Uh, yeah, no problem. The last thing I'll say, Hannah, I'm going to type it in the chat because it's kind of a funny word. Um, I use an amortization table, which uh, is, is basically a home mortgage calculator. Um, I had a, I bought a little book for five bucks and it has all the charts in there of like number of years for the loan, interest rate, how much you're paying, because it was a really easy snapshot because this house we were looking at, you know, varied in price by X thousands of dollars. And it was a really easy snapshot to say, can I afford this or can I not afford this? So you can find all that online. You don't really need to buy the book. Um, but that table is really helpful to not have to like, type in the calculator every single time, <laughs> you know, is this in my price range or is it not? But that was just a tool when I bought my first house that was really helpful yeah. and I wanted to pass on, so. Another, to, to kind of build on that is, who is the lender that you're meeting with today, Hannah? I, um, you don't have to share that. But. Bangor Savings. Okay, yeah. so Bangor Savings has a lot of tech savvy folks and a lot of people that text you, work on the weekends. Um, so they're a really great company to work with, um, but, when you do find a home that you are mildly interested in or something that you want to make an offer on, it's sometimes smart to run it by your lender just because they can throw the number, the taxes, your ratios, your interest rate into a little you know, concoction and tell you what your estimated payment is or to tell you if it fits in your ratios to make sure that it can work if it's at you know, the tippy top of your budget. Um, and sometimes that gives you some more confidence in, in moving forward. Um, and that's something I can help with too. If we go and look at one, you're like, I love this. I don't know, might be too tight. I'm like, well, let me text Kayla. Kayla Dunn works over there. I don't know if that's who you're meeting with. Um, but I text her and have her run it. And hopefully within an hour or two, she'll be able to get back to me so that we can move forward or, or not. Um, so that's good. It kind of gives you more of an accurate read. Um, but an amortization schedule, as you kind of dive in, it's, it's helpful as well. You could plug them into Google as well. With them. yeah, I mean, same same idea. Yeah, yeah. I just yeah. I just had to make fun of you just a little bit, Keith, with your book. With my old school little book, I know, right? <laughs> um, it, was, it was twelve years ago. I mean, yeah, you could still put it in Google, but <laughs> I'm just I'm just kidding. I wouldn't say I that I didn't know Keith well. <laughs> um, last thing on amortization schedules, which one of my favorite things is if you make you know on a typical thirty year mortgage. Yes, this is one I wanted to mention too. Yeah one additional payment a year will cut off somewhere around six years. It's not an exact math, but if you make one payment a year on a 30 year mortgage, you're actually only gonna be paying for about 25 years for that mortgage and it really mm -hmm. adds. This is kind of going into a little bit more, but it helps add equity quite a lot faster because you are not only paying on your interest in principal. So little yep. plug. Yep, for sure. And I guess that if you don't have any questions, Hannah, I just want to say thanks for joining us um and to let you know that you know this market is kind of a hard one to be a buyer in there are uh, there is a lot of competition with a little bit of inventory we are heading into spring and hoping for more and there's new listings every day and if you stay on top of it and go into it with the right mentality we can make you a successful homeowner um but on the flip side of that it's also a great time to be a mortgagee because the rates are so historically low and I hear of everybody refinancing right now and saving hundreds of dollars. So it's kind of a double-edged sword, if you will, not double-edged, but bittersweet. It, it, yeah. It, 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 time to buy with interest rates the way that it is. And appreciation is going to continue throughout the next few years. People are flooding cities to go to places like Bangor, Maine and places like Fort, La Fort Lauderdale, Florida that aren't a giant city, but 
people want to get away from the living on top of each other. So. So don't be afraid. Get somebody on your side that's aggressive like me and um, we'll work together to make it happen. Well, thank you guys so much. You're very welcome. Keith is going to follow up with an email with that form that I mentioned, and he's going to send you our contact information. Um, After you get pre-approved, if you want to reach out, please feel free. Email, text, or call. I'm always available. Awesome. Thank you guys so much. You're welcome. Thank you.